Hello and welcome all to my YouTube channel Azure Beyond Demos. My name is Kunal Chandratre and we are going to discuss today about upgrading basic SKU public IPs of Azure to standard SKU. In this video, I'll talk about why to upgrade basic public IPs to standard, uh, what is the need, uh, important information about basic IP retirement, then we will understand scenarios in which you will need an upgrade from basic to standard public IP. I will demo about Azure VM uh, having NIC with multiple basic public IP upgrade. Then I will also demo about virtual machines which are in availability sets and they're having multiple basic SKU public IPs and then how do you upgrade them and then we will close. Rest of the scenarios uh, for the upgrade I will cover in uh, next part of this video. So let us start. All right, let's understand why we need to move away from Azure basic SKU IP address and use standard SKU public IP going forward. Number one reason is standard SKU public IP are secured by default. What it means? If you attach a basic IP to NIC of VM, basic SKU accepts all inbound traffic. This is not the case with standard public IP. Means to allow inbound to that VM over standard public IP, you will need to add explicitly an NG on NIC or have NSG attached to the subnet. Then only inbound will work. This is what it means. Standard public IPs are secured by default. Second, for high availability and resiliency, if you plan to deploy your Azure workloads in zonal or zone redundant configuration, then only standard SKU public IP is supported. And then new edge services like Azure Firewall, NAT Gateway, Standard Load Balancers, all support standard SKU public IP only. So these are important reasons why you should upgrade existing basic SKU public IPs to standard public IPs. When this was announced, well, this was announced long back and that could be the reason why I see so many organizations still having basic IPs in their Azure subscriptions. Upgrade announcement was shared in August 2022. So Microsoft Azure has given almost three years to perform this upgrade. Also, new basic IP creation will be stopped from March 2025 onwards. So in case you want to test the public IP upgrade process in dev test environment, uh, have few basic IPs already created uh, in this week for testing purpose. Let us look at the scenarios in which you will need upgrade on basic to standard SKU public IPs. Uh, so if you have single Azure VM with multiple basic SKU IPs, this is a scenario when you are using NVA, Network Virtual Appliance, from companies like Palo Alto, Checkpoint, F5, and so on. If you are running these NVAs in high availability, using availability sets, then you might have Azure basic IPs attached to them. Uh, in the same scenario where you are using Azure Layer 4 load balancer for load balancing between VMs, then that LB might have basic IP addresses. Express Route Gateway. Uh, created long ago may still have basic IPs VPN gateway created for site-to-site -site VPN and application gateway having basic public IPs. So these are the scenarios where you will need to perform upgrade from basics How to check if your subscription has basic SKU public IPs. Let's look at Azure portal All right, so how do we see if I have uh, basic SKU public IP addresses? So click on public IP addresses Make sure that subscription resource group and location equals all. Then add the filter, select here SKU. Then select only basic, uncheck this standard. So these many basic public IP addresses I have in my subscription. If I want to see whether they are associated or no, click on manage view, then click on edit columns. Here click on add column, drop down, select associated to and then click on save and then you can see that last three ip addresses are actually associated but the rest of them are not associated with anything so maybe upgrading non-associated ip addresses will be easy uh, but for this i'll have to take special care all right now let's upgrade actual vm having two basic SKU public ip Okay, so this is my virtual machine, which is in a running state. If I open its network settings, 
this is the network interface card in IC. And then if I click on IP con configurations, there are two IP configs. Now, uh, if I open this, uh, the IP address name is my IP1. And here, the IP address name is my IP2. And if I look at the both IP addresses, you can see that my IP1 is having the basic SKU and my IP2 that is also having the basic SKU. All right, for this VM, let's understand the script uh, which we will use for upgrade. Uh, the link from where I got this script is already in the description box. So first, what we do is we install a specific module which has been created just for this type of upgrade. That is Azure VM public IP upgrade. So we install that, okay. Then we have to run the same command uh, to import that module. So we will have to use import module and then configure the same name over here. Then if you are using Azure shell, then you may not need to run this particular line, which uh, is used for connecting to Azure account. Okay. I am going to use Azure PowerShell, so I'm not going to need this. Okay. But in case in your Azure PowerShell, if the subscription ID selected is not correct, then possibly just search for selecting the right subscription ID and have it selected. Okay. Then uh, we will run this particular command, which ends with what if. So what if tag over here or property, what it does, it checks the current virtual machine for the compatibility of or the upgrade. If it is not compatible or any change is required, it should report that. That's the expectation. Once this is done, then you can actually run the same script without what if tag, and then it should perform the upgrade. So let's do it. So I run the first command of installing the module. Okay, so installation is done. You may get this weird messages. I don't know what we need to do with this, but this is something that installation is completed. Then I get the import module. Now I'm going to run the what if command to check if my VM is compatible with the upgrade. So it is checking upgrade process. It's checking that NVA has public IP address attached. Yes. And then there is an error message. Let's understand this. So what it says is virtual machine NVA1, that's a VM name, has associated public IP address. But IP configuration where neither the NIC of that VM or a subnet in which that VM is present have associated NSG. And this comes back to the same information that I had given to you that standard IPs are secured by default and that is what it is saying. Standard SKU public IP are secure by default meaning no inbound traffic is allowed unless an NSG is explicitly attached to either NIC of that VM or to subnet of that VM. So I am going to go back and attach an NSG now there may be a situation wherein you will not know if I attach NSG, then what will happen to my inbound and outbound traffic. So the best way in that case to attach an NSG, which has all inbound allowed and all outbound allowed. Okay. So if suppose it is a firewall device for which you are performing an upgrade, attaching NSG with all inbound uh, allowed and all outbound allowed should not hamper the functionality of your firewall on Azure virtual machine. So let's do that. Before going uh, to the NSG attachment, uh, you might see a message. Do you want to proceed without NSG at the bottom? No, don't do that. Okay. If you do that, then whatever the basic IPs are there, they will be upgraded to standard and they will not accept any inbound traffic. It might happen that way. That's why it's always important that first you attach NSG to your virtual machine NIC or subnet and then perform the upgrade. I have not tried to upgrade the basic IP to standard SKU without NSG. And if you are doing this upgrade on critical VMs like firewall NVS, then I will certainly recommend first attach NSG with all inbound outbound allowed and then perform the upgrade. Let's have a quick look at NSG. So I have this NSG attached to the subnet of my virtual machine. 
wherein it has inbound rule to allow internet inbound and then and the outbound rule you don't need to add any custom rule uh, outbound internet will be by default available in your NSG. now run the what if command again to check if there are no errors now after attaching NSG to my subnet of vm there is no error now we will actually run the uh, command to upgrade the basic qip so let's do that all right so here goes the command so it is asking that it will upgrade all the public ip at address attached to the specified vm so i said yes go ahead and now it has started the upgrade process So you can see it has identified both the IP addresses that was attached to my VM. Okay, then it disassociated all the public IP addresses from the VM. Then it checked if those public IPs are static or no. If it is dynamic B6Q public IP, then it will mark those IP addresses as static and then it will disassociate. Okay, so it has confirmed that it is static before it is associating then it is actually disassociating that particular public ip from the nic now after that uh, it is actually applying the updates okay so it says that upgrading of all public ip addresses is complete so it says my ip1 my ip2 both are upgraded to standard SKU, and then it has reassociated all public ips to the vmnic and it says applying update is completed so now i go to the azure subscription and i refresh this page i check my ip and as you can see it is upgraded to standard and if i go to my ip2 you can view it this also has been upgraded to the standard tier so i hope this video gives you an overview and detailed steps as well on upgrading basic IP to standard SKU in Azure. Now in the second video, we will see how we can perform the upgrade for rest of the scenarios. Thank you and keep watching.